Why do we go to museums? To see pretty things, weird things, odd or interesting things. Visual culture or what we see has played a key role in shaping historical narratives or what we know. As safeguards of this visual culture, museums hold the power to direct and define cultural thought. But in this cultural landscape, where do Pakistani museums fit in? While the world is debating complex issues such as hashtag museums are not neutral, why then are we still stuck on problems like hashtag museums are falling apart? As an art historian and cultural heritage professional working on museum development in Pakistan, I have observed that museum culture, as with a lot else in this country, is full of contradictions. On the one hand, we have a very limited museum growing culture. But on the other hand, we have a wide variety of different types of museums across the country in cities large and small. These include military museums, art museums, archaeological museums, anthropological museums, natural and national history museums. Each museum displays a unique set of objects, but the end goal of building a narrative and presenting it to the public remain the same. I'm going to talk to you today about the role museums of ancient and pre-modern art play in the lives of the people of Pakistan today. As a society, museums barely register on the list of things to do when we visit a new place. Quick show of hands, how many people here can name five museums in Islamabad? I thought so. Every single time I've posed this question to an audience, I've gotten the same response. And yet, those of us who are privileged enough to travel abroad will always put museums on top of our bucket list of things to do. And this is true even for people who otherwise might not have an interest in history, art, or culture. Visiting museums has just become an acceptable thing to do when one travels. Why then is this not true for our local museums? The answers are both simple and complex. Let's start with the simple answer. Our museums are not enticing enough for the public to want to visit. Most of our museums of ancient art that are government owned and run are suffering from one or more of the following problems. Lack of funding, lack of trained personnel, lack of innovation, lack of incentive to innovate and very, very low audience numbers. And this is a vicious cycle. The public will not want to visit a museum that is dusty, that is badly lit and boring and uninteresting. On the other hand, the government, for all its talk of wanting to increase tourism, both, both local and international in the country, is reluctant to channel the funds necessary for development and re renovation of museums. Let's come to the more complex reason. As a society, we have a very limited and skewed understanding of our history. And this is true both for history of modern Pakistan, as well as for history of the ancient lands um, the, on which Pakistan stands today. Our schools, both public and private, teach a very limited curriculum uh, of history, which deals broadly with three areas of history. You start with the arrival of Islam in South Asia, then you skip way, way ahead to the Mughal era and onwards to the partition of the subcontinent. What happened before, what happened in between is known by more, barely a few students and understood by even less. For what this does from a visual culture point of view is that when you take students to a museum and they see, for example, Gandharan art, they feel no connection. There's no sense of ownership. We are doing a disservice to our future generation by denying them the opportunity to understand the beautiful and syncretic history of the land that we live on. The the ever-changing dynasties and the connections forged as people moved in and out of this land are what make our art history so fascinating and consequently what make our museums so important. Let me give you an example of a set of objects that I have both a terrible and wonderful relationship with. Let's talk about the Mansura bronzes. My relationship with them is wonderful because they're incredibly fascinating, completely unique objects. And it is terrible because because of their uniqueness, it is a researcher's nightmare working on them. These are a set of four very large door handles that were discovered in Mansura. Mansura is a historic city in Sindh, which was capital of the Muslim Caliphate from 8th to 10th century. These bronzes are datable to the early 880s. And if you notice the inscription around the circumference, it reads as follows. Bismillahir Rahim. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, 
There is none worthy of worship except God, and Muhammad is the prophet of Amir Abdullah ibn Umar. Amir Abdullah ibn Umar being the leader at the time. Now, what's interesting about these objects, there's a set of four of them. Each one of them depicts a human, leonine, or demonic face. Yet surrounding them are inscriptions from the Holy Quran in Kufic script. They were found in Muslim era Sindh in the south, but visually resemble pre-Islamic north, such as Kashmir and the surrounding regions, a whole lot more. And what is most interesting about them is that there is nothing quite like them in the known visual art repertoire of the Islamic art world. If we allow ourselves to look at objects like these in detail, to learn about them, to understand them, we open ourselves up to understanding just how complex and layered the history of Islam in South Asia really is. The Islamic world is not some monolith with a homogenous identity, but a set of rich, vibrant, and diverse lands with complex histories and visual cultures. Where are these bronzes kept, you may ask? So the two of them that you've just seen are in the Islamabad Museum. And yes, there is an Islamabad Museum, and it is only five minutes away from where we are right now. Uh, these have been missing for quite a few years. In 2016, I was told with complete confidence by three different museums that we have them in storage, but we can't permit you to look at them because you're not authorized. I was convinced that these priceless objects have been sold on the black market and are long gone. So it was a huge relief and a pleasant surprise to see them go back up on display just a few weeks ago in the Islamabad Museum. The other two are in the National Museum of Pakistan in Sadar, Karachi, a museum that everyone tried to convince me simply does not exist when I asked for directions. I found them, after all. Um, you may notice that their condition is slightly different. Um, they're shinier and a little more glazed looking, which in my opinion means that there has been some conservation work done on them, which should not have been done on them, but at least they're, they're there. They're not sold on the black market, so we'll take that. This museum that supposedly does not exist actually houses a large collection of very interesting artifacts from a range of civilizations and geographical time periods. You have Gandharan art, you have art from Mohenjo-daro, and moving on to pre and post partition subcontinent. And in this same museum that is empty of people and full of neglect is one room that stands starkly out of place. Stylish vitrines, soft but focused lighting, clear labels. This is proof that we can fix our museums. This room was renovated a few years ago and has been maintained ever since. And this shows that just with a few simple changes, we can instantly make our museums more appealing. Compare this room to this gallery, which shows these outdated jetties or display cases, which likely have not been renovated since the museum was first inaugurated in the 1970s. But with a few minor structural changes, we can instantly make you want to come, come visit this, this display of Quranic manuscripts. This gives me hope. We can fix our museums and we can make it last. We just need to focus on the fact that all of our history requires the same level of respect, understanding, and funding, not just the Quranic manuscripts. I'm going to also mention another major problem that Pakistan, the museum world in Pakistan is facing, and that is illegal antiquities trade. When museums don't keep proper records of their objects, when there's no website, when there's no reliable data of acquisition history or provenance, it leaves museums vulnerable to theft and corruption. By strengthening museum infrastructure and Training your personnel properly, and most importantly, strengthening laws around the buying and selling of antiquities, we can protect these precious artworks, we can keep them safe, and we can put them on display for the people to enjoy, to whom this history and culture actually belong. I'm going to leave you with a quick look at the State Bank Museum in Karachi as a case study in how we can make our museums fresh, exciting, interactive, and fun. And it's important to note that this museum was developed and inaugurated by renowned museologist and archaeologist, Dr. Asma Ibrahim, who herself is Fulbright alumna. And if you look at this image right here, it's right from the beginning. I found this quite fascinating. I don't know if you can see it, but behind where it says State Bank Museum, you can see carved on the building its previous name, which was Imperial Bank of India. 
So they've managed to maintain the old and the new identity of this building. You know, you don't have to let go of the past just to create something new. Within, there's a very, there's a carefully curated and well thought out display tracing the history of money from ancient coinage all the way up to modern day currency. All the displays are dynamic, carefully labeled and interesting. And they also have interactive uh, areas where children can play games. You have to, you can put puzzles together with money, which draws a variety of museum visitors, both old and young. They have trained tour guides who can offer you tours, informative tours for free. Another interesting thing that they've done at the State Bank Museum is that they've dedicated a portion of their galleries to Sadiqan's work. Sadiqan created a number of murals, paintings, drawings, and sketches specifically for the State Bank Museum. So they've embraced this part of their um, heritage and given space to one of the most well-known artists from Pakistan. What they've also done to keep their displays dynamic is to have displays both permanent and rotating from contemporary Pakistani artists in the main gallery of the museum, such as this sculpture that you can see by Pakistani artist Amin Gulji. And most importantly, they also have a gift shop. What you can see on the screen are uh, uh, cufflinks made from Mughal coins. The land we stand on today was home once to the most creative civilizations of the world, boasting diverse and inspired art. For Pakistan to grow and thrive as a vibrant and successful nation of the global south, we need to rediscover our lost cosmopolitan identity and build a society that is tolerant, pluralistic, and progressive in sync with our ancient roots. Thank you.